So more about the societal breakdown that is known as Rod Farrell. Okay, so Rod Farrell's Visago, the vampire clan. He gets four people to go down to Florida to kill two uh, two parents because of uh, a woman. He was depressed. He came from Murray, Kentucky. He's 16 years old. He's young. And he thinks he's a vampire, 500-year-old vampire. So he's delusioned and crazy. Um, but the uh, 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 other societal influences that have also influenced him. He uh, was blamed for something that he said he didn't do in Murray, Kentucky. He said the police, the school, and his mother all said that he had to see some help. He was seeing a psychiatrist, and he was given medication. So he was under medic some sort of med medication, maybe Prozac, Zoloft. I don't know what was back there in, in those times. Um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like a million years ago, but it was uh, in, in uh, 1996. So it was a while ago. And... Um, so, 1996, you have, uh, um, you know, that's Tupac, you know, got shot. Um, I'm 14 years old. So, he's actually two years older than me. Uh, so, Rod Farrell, okay, he's, uh, he got blamed for this and he's being ostracized. And so, he's being sort of distant. I don't know what he's saying that he got blamed for. That could be a possible reason. Everybody ostracizing him, trying to press him, force him to do shit he don't want to do. Can he not sit down? Does he have ADHD? Does he not like the boring ass fucking school? He said the school, the police, and his mother. Those are the three people that had forced him to go see a psychiatrist. The police, his mother, and the school. He said everybody. Basically the whole city. The whole city. The cops. The school. His mother. Right? That's the whole city. He, he forgot the people. He didn't mention what the, what the people want. But. So he's talking about the murder. He kills these two people, goes to Florida, kills these two people because of this woman he was talking to. I don't even know the relationship of the woman he was talking to, Heather Windorf. And she said living with the, her parents was hell. So, you know, she's living through hell, tells Rod. Rod wants to be a superhero of some sort. Um, perhaps he did it for her without her saying anything about it, which I think is uh, unlikely. I think she probably, you know, said it was hell. Could you do something? He was like, hell yeah, got his, his crew on down there. And he's real shitty about it. His crew. He's sitting there talking about like his. Uh, he said that his the the guy that ki helps. It goes in the house and helps him kill the two people. And actually, Rod Farrell really single handedly kills the two people. Um, but he said that his friend just followed him in like a lost little puppy, and um, and that's how he described him. Oh yeah, my friend. You know, my so-called friend who I can manipulate and oppress. He just followed me like a lost little puppy, and um, so we're okay. So out of the book, Court TV in the middle of his confession. So she clawed me and clawed me, spilled fucking scalding hot coffee on me, pissed me off. Okay, so I made sure she was dead, roaming through the house, looking for car keys, money, whatever. Thought about waiting for Zoe's sister, but decided, nah, why bother? Why bother? Let her come home, have a mental breakdown, call the police, which I was correct, she did. Right, yeah, good fucking call, Rod Farrell. They, they come home, they see their parents dead. Yeah, it's going to have a little mental breakdown. She probably called the fucking police immediately. That's not like... You're not a smart fucking person because you predicted that shit, stupid cocky fucker. Anyway, went through the parents' bedroom, found keys to the Explorer, which uh, you've now impounded. Casually walked outside, <laughs> casually walked outside, unlocked the door, peeled out of the driveway. Where was Scott during all this time? Oh, God, he totally froze. He'd never seen people get killed before. <laughs> Neither did you. That's the first time Rod Farrell seen him. Uh, before, he was hyped about telling how he's going to kill them, so basically he was just an accessory. He didn't do shit. After that, we drove over to Janine's house looking for the girls because they thought we we're only getting the girls to run away with us, which was very far from our minds at that point in time because I didn't want to be followed, so we drove back over to Janine's house. At that point, we drove the Explorer, so she, Heather Windorf, kind of realized what happened to her parents. She flipped for about 100 miles or so. Heather did, yeah. She goes by Zoe. She looks to me as her father or something. Interesting. So it's, yeah, this, uh, the, the plot thickens, right? So he kills her because he's got a paternalistic and wants to protect her. He looks at me like a father or something, and he loves, like, you know, and actually I've heard women be like, oh, daddy, oh, daddy. So, you know, that could just be, that could be what, like, they're, that's how their relationship works, right? So they saw the vehicle. She basically realized what happened to him, and then she's, like, mad about it, right? She basically flipped out. But she didn't run away, you know, so... So what all did you take um, out of the house? We took her mother's pearls, which were around her teddy bear's neck. We took her father's knife. What about the knife? Was it still in the car? All oh, Zoe had it on her because it was her father's knife, and she wanted to keep it as a souvenir, I guess. 
Where were you guys going? You mean after Florida? The place we were going was to New Orleans. We got pulled over by cops there too. We got pulled over five times on this whole trip and never got caught until now until we checked into a hotel. Why did you let one of them call? Who called your grandmother? Did somebody call South Dakota? Yeah, that was Shay. She was freaking out and basically the only thing I care about in this world. So Shay was the only thing he cares about in this world. So he doesn't really love Heather. He's saying he loves Shay. And who the fuck is Shay? Um, she's basically the only thing, uh, she was freaking out, so it was Shay fucking Heather? Um, Moran, bingo, that's who got you busted when she made the phone call? Oh, I know, bingo, that's who got you busted when she made that phone call. Oh, I know, that's when I told them, get out of town now, but they never listened to me. See, they never listened to their, to the leader. <laughs> I'm the leader. They probably listen to you all the fucking time, but the fact that you're such a dick, I'm the leader, do as I say. Where are you going to go? I don't know. Don't care. Just ride till you lit somewhere. So I found a nice forest area. I was just going to fucking ditch the fucking exploring some lake and start going through the fucking woods, killing deers or whatever I could find for meat. It was her grandparents that turned them in. It was a, her grandparents that turned them in? Oh, I don't know for a fact. Did you all ever discuss? <laughs> he ain't going to tell you shit. Did you all ever discuss these homicides prior to the day you were there with anybody you can remember? We never thought about it until about 10 minutes before we did it. So it wasn't a planned thing to you there. It wasn't premeditated. It would be like spontaneous because if you premeditate something, it's too easily planned out and easily known. Do you know Zoe's parents prior to this? I never even seen them before. I found out, found them that night. So it wasn't even hell. I went to the wrong house first. Didn't kill anybody though because I thought, I looked in, I saw there's little kids. And that's my rule. I don't kill anything that's little. Now adults, that's perfectly fine. 16 and up. Have you considered staying there, the Windorf's house, and waiting for Janine Leclerc? No, because Scott wanted to stay at the house just to dump the corpses in the pool. And I was like, for one thing, let's just stick. And for another, no, Dana and Zoe and Shay weren't involved in any of this. And those three are basically just the ones we kind of kidnapped. But they went along agreeably, right? Shay had no choice. I told her she agreed or I'd hog tie her, take her with me. So he loves fucking Shay, and kind of, I, I, I think Shay's Heather. Uh, I can't, I, I'm not going to say that, to be honest with you. Zoe, Shay, he didn't say, okay, whatever. Told her she, she agreed or I'd hog tie her, take her with me. Dana came with Shay because she was worried about Shay. So Dana came with Shay. Well, you're threatening, take me with you, I'm going to tie you up. And so Dana's like, oh, I'm going to go with you. <laughs> Zoe come along because she's been planning to come with me for about a year because we planned on whenever I moved back to Estates, her and Janine were going to come up here and we were just like going to go somewhere till. Uh, I still have a lot of friends in New Orleans as where I was going to live. And if Shay didn't freak out, that's where I would have been right now. What I, what can I say? It's a bitch about living in the big cities. You learn to be good friends with the cops and crime lords. Rod, you said that Scott never saw a murder before. Did you see a murder before? I've seen, I've fucking seen murders like all my life. Ever since I was five, because my grandfather, for one, he's never been caught for either. You saw these people murder other people? Holy shit. Okay, this, this I bet has a lot to do with. Rod Farrell, okay, Murray, Kentucky, grandfather of Rod Farrell. Oh, I've been, he says, I've been seeing murder all my life. My grandfather's a murderer. You saw him? Well, yeah, of course. He's part of an organization called the Black Mask. When I was five years old, they chose me as the guardian of the Black Mask. He's the guardian. Wow, how important. Of a, of a murderous, you know, a murderous society. Maybe you fucking mafia or fucking um, Freemasons or some shit. Hell's Angels. And the Guardian has to become one with everybody. In, in other words, they raped me. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, I, I really wasn't feeling any pity for him, but I think that just fucking... So three cases in a row. We're talking about fucking kids, okay? Three fucking cases. Okay, I don't... <laughs> Rod Farrell's being oppressed by the authority figures. He's getting raped when he's five years old. Charlie Manson, he got raped as a child, as a boy. He turned into a psychopath. Raping, raping boys, raping anybody. It's, it's fucking, it's got to be a very traumatic fucking experience. It has to be. So, it's part of the Black Mask. And that's an interesting organization. I don't know if they looked that shit up and said, what the fuck is that about? And they have to have a, a sacrifice a human uh, to the Guardian, so they sacrifice someone right in front of me. Wow, so they, according to fucking Scott, 
the Sago, okay, Rod Farrell, I don't know why I said Scott, but according to Rod Farrell, there's a group in Kentucky, uh, or at least his grandfather, I guess it's in Kentucky, called Black Mask, and the Black Mask and the Guardian has to become one with everybody. And the way that they initiate is a rape five-year-old, Rod Farrell. Now, Rod Farrell's all raped by all these old men, right? Might even be like skulls and bones and shit, right? Freemasons, skulls and bones. So everybody's getting raped in these secret societies. Um, the uh, Bilderberg group, right? That's the Illuminati. So, uh, uh, Black Mask and the Guardian, they rape them. And then, to become one with everybody, they have a sacrificial offering and they kill a person right in front of him so he has actually been surrounded by blood his whole life he's again sort of like a good comparison to charlie manson a bad father figure somebody raping him right giving him bad ideas about how to live life um bad father shitty fathers is a pretty consistent thing with this 95 percent of the world's problem according to george carlin is the stupid shit that fathers do to their sons or grandfathers do to their grandsons or uncles do to their N nephews. So there's like, what city was in it? It was in Murray, Murray, Kentucky. So Black Mask is in fucking Murray, Kentucky, where they're sacrificing people and raping kids. Would you say that was a cult? Yeah, I'd never become part of them. Kind of tough when you're uh, hardcore, isn't it, man? <laughs> this cop is just like, buddy, buddy, chaming. Oh, you're hardcore, man. Two things bother me. What happened when I was five and the fact that I would never get to see Shay after this. I've been hanging around gangs and cults and all this shit all my life. And I've seen, like, sacrifices and drug buys. I'm just asking, Rod. Killing is a way of life. Animals do it. And that's the way humans are. Just the worst predators of all, actually. How old is Shay? She is 16. She is carrying around my kid. Oh, my God. Shay is carrying around his kid. Who the fuck is Shay? Is that Heather? Some other person? She's almost two months pregnant. Like they say, shit happens. Well, Rod, I'm not going to sugarcoat date thing. Sugarcoat date. Uh, the, the cop. Well, Rod, I'm not going to sugarcoat this thing, buddy, because you know what you've done. It's pretty simple. I'm fucked. The guys from Lake County, the detectives, are on their way here. Is it actually possible for somebody my age to get the death penalty? It depends. I don't know what the laws are in Florida. When you're 16 years old in this state, you can be tried as an adult and you're subject to adult penalties. Because I was thinking what I would have done if I was an adult would equal the death penalty. So I was kind of hoping, you know, I was like, please go ahead and last. To be straight up with you, yeah, it's probably going to entail the death penalty. <laughs> You're going to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there you go. I'm sorry, this is like a big fucking joke. My life seems like a dream. My childhood is taken away at five. I don't know whether I'm asleep or dreaming anymore. Him getting raped at five is what fucked Rob Farrell. Let's, let's stop rap, raping fucking boys, okay? Stop raping them when they're five. Stop raping them when they're 15 in prison. Stop raping fucking boys, uh, Kentucky. Raping of boys created Rod Farrell, a serial killer, and Charlie Manson, a motherfucker that killed the 60s. There's two cases, and we're going to keep on, you know, seeing seeing what, what, the, what is up with all these other folks, too. So... My life seems like a dream. My childhood was taken away at five. I don't know whether I'm asleep or dreaming anymore, so whatever. For all I know, I could wake up in five minutes. Rod, I can assure you, it's not a dream. After that, the interview trailed off into a dying falls ride. Uh, Rod tried to take the opportunity to pay back a real or imagined grievance by accusing his stepfather, Darren Brevin, with now residing in Pontiac, Michigan, of allegedly dealing drugs out of a pizza parlor that he owned. For whatever reason, the would-be would vampire fell right into the snitch game as the first videotaped confession ended. So, wow. Immediately, he's, he's snitching on everybody. Just like, hey, I know some drug dealers. Can not can I get, like, some, you know, uh, uh, a deal because I'm giving you these fucking people's names and shit? Because he dealt drugs. Oh, man, I've been around murder and drugs. It's all so surreal to me. Oh, my fucking God. He cried about this shit. It was horrible what happened. He needed someone to talk and someone to give a shit. Um, but, well, I don't know. The jury's only drunk half the bitter cup of Rod Farrell's revelations, for they yet see the second videotaped confession. The one Farrell had made to detectives Al Gussler and Wayne Longo, with the latter handling the majority of the question, the tape was loaded into monitor, and the real killer video began. You still hanging in there, Rod? Gussler? Today's date is November 29th, 96, about 5.38. Present for the interview is Longo, Gussler... And will you give us your full name? So they're being all, oh, take me serious, I'm a cop, right? 
Uh, Roderick, Justin Farrell, you're aware, I'm sure, while we're here to speak with you after this afternoon? Yeah, and that being what? Let's see, the murders of Heather Windorf's parents? Do you know the first names by any chance? Uh, no. Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Windorf. That's the most I know. Rod, do you have any parents? Well, my mom, Sandra Gibson, and my real father, Rick Allen Farrell, my stepfather, Darren Brevin, and my second stepfather, Kyle Newman. He's got three fathers. He's got three people in his life.